Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Market Outlook. This is Jeff Bish, president of MarketGage.com, filling in for Keith this week. So before I get started, I'd like to ask you to please fill out your opinion on the direction of the market so that uh, we can continue to collect the data and relay the data of the sentiment of our traders. In this week's market outlook, I am going to keep it really straightforward and make sure that you're looking at uh, some important relationships and also try to answer the question that's uh, got to be on a lot of traders' minds, which is when does this rally run its course? Uh, I'm going to jump to uh, somewhat of a conclusion and say you really don't want to try to uh, pick the top here. Uh, there's going to be plenty of indications. Uh, I can almost guarantee it that the market is getting tired and that may come uh, well after the market gets extended. In fact, you might argue by some measures that the market has been extended. So let's just take a quick look at where the market is uh, in terms of some channels and some key levels of resistance. Then I'm going to take a look at some key relationships, as I've said, and we'll take a look at uh, some measures of overbought to see where we stand on those. I'm going to start with the IWMs. This is a scrunched up daily chart because the IWMs really have uh, led this rally in terms of major all-time highs. And uh, I say that because you can see by the horizontal line up uh, up near the top of the screen here, the IWMs taking out their uh, 2011 highs. We're actually taking out much uh, longer term. If I go to the weekly chart, much longer term levels. They took out their 07, 06 highs uh, a while ago before we uh, collapsed here, but uh, they're right back up. And these are all-time highs in the uh, Russell 2000. So by that measure, the IWMs really have led, and you want to pay attention to the IWMs. In fact, from a day trading point of view, uh, IWMs have been a, a really good indicator in terms of the direction of the day. Now I want to bring, bring to your attention also um, some channels. So big picture here on the IWMs is they broke out. Uh, this is old news around the 87 level and have run pretty nicely since. Now in doing that, they've also come to the top of a few uh, channels that we want to pay attention to. First, the channel that I have illustrated here in the yellow is a parallel line from this valid trend line. So you can see that we've um, broken out of that channel. To me, this is more of a representation of a market that's getting uh, potentially extended. But as I said, I'm going to give you a, a better way to figure out when a major top might be in than just to pick it out from the channel top. You want to pay attention to that channel. could tell you that we might have some consolidation. Uh, in fact, it did indicate that over the last couple days before the news on Friday drove the market even higher. The next channel we want to watch out for is again a, a valid trend line created um, by these two points here and then extended to this parallel line. That's going to put you way up, way off the screen. But pay attention to that if we really get uh, going to the upside. <clears throat> Finally, the uh, channel here that is way too steep to be sustainable, but I suppose we could have been saying that for a long time, uh, is another one to keep an eye on. All this uh, together will create a situation where if we're seeing the top end of this channel, probably up around the 95 level uh, over the next week or so, it will be um, pretty impressive. Now I'm going to come back to um, what to look for for a major top after we take a look at the spies and the Qs. So if we take a look at the spies, uh, the spies are not at all-time highs. Okay, if we take a look at the weekly, you can see we're bumping up against 
the 2006-2007 level. So there's good reason to believe it's going to find some resistance up here and slow down. The 152-153 level is a reasonable level to expect it to slow down for uh, this reason. If we just take the resistance line across uh, the May 11 high to the September uh, 2012 high or 2012 high. Again, we're breaking out of that level. When I say breaking out, this is weekly, means that should be some resistance here, can overshoot it for sure. If we come back in, uh, it's going to be a warning sign. The channels, however, still give it some room, and the channel happens to intersect with about this 153 level, and the 153 level is I would describe as kind of just the beginning of the 07 top. So 153 up to probably about 155, a significant level of resistance for the spies. And again, that's just keep our eyes out uh, for that level. Let's take a look finally at the cues. And the cues are really the wild card here um, on a weekly basis. Uh, you can quickly see that it's this 68 and a half level is a very good uh, target to expect some uh, resistance. But if I go to the dailies, you can see that we've got, as of this uh, past week, as of Friday, a pretty good breakout. We still need to clear this high here, but a pretty good breakout of some pretty tight consolidation. All this is happening as Apple is falling apart. So if Apple starts to turn around and move higher, the queues really have some uh, some firepower here to move higher, and that could be what moves the rest of the market higher in another extension of this leg that I'm sure a lot of traders are thinking, how much higher can this go? Queues could be, technology could be a driver moving forward. Again, with eyes on the 68 and a half level as being pretty significant uh, resistance and then you've got plenty to get through so it's it, there's a lot of work to be done but there's there's a lot of reason to believe that it could still continue to go so where do when do we have to say enough is enough now I'm not going to try and pick the top um, but one thing that uh, I will say is well worth looking out for is a pattern that um, works pretty reliably and it's vague but it's pretty reliable and that is this green line here is the 10 day moving average a pretty simple 10 day moving average what you want to watch out for after an extended move not after a short move but after an extended move like the one that we've seen is that if the market breaks the 10 day pretty significantly and then in its next attempt to rally is unable to take out the old high before it starts to roll over that's when you want to uh, really have your guard up against a significant decline now significant decline is not hard to imagine when your 50-day moving average is down here at 144 alright so what am I saying Intermediate term, significant decline happens after a lot more consolidation, after there's been one significant break of the 10 and then a rally back up that is unable to reclaim the new highs. It's a simple pattern. It's one you should watch out for. All right, there's another pattern that's going on that uh, I'm not sure traders are focused on. And that is the relationship between the... Uh, the stocks and the bonds. So here what I've done is I've taken the spies and put them right next to the TLTs, the 20-year um, bond or the ETF for the 20-year bond. And what I want to point out is a relationship that's pretty compelling that will probably give us a good indication as to when a more significant high 
in the stocks is in place. Again, we're not looking for a one or two day correction, pick that top here. Uh, we're looking for a more significant high. And the way I'm going to demonstrate that is to show you that the relationship uh, between stocks and bonds, well, I think a lot of people have felt it's not there, is very, uh, very strong and uh, quite a tell on what could happen next. So now I've got, if you'll uh, watch here for a second, I've got a cursor that is going to show both the, t the time in both markets. And if we look at how these markets have been inversely correlated, it's a good indication of what to watch out for. Now what I want you to pay attention to is that essentially when we see a, a top and a significant move in one market, the other market is doing the opposite. So how does that relate to the stocks? If the stocks start selling off in a significant way and we want to know whether or not this could lead to a more significant sell-off, we're going to want to watch for the bonds to be doing the opposite. So here as the market, as, this, as the stocks were topping, or I could even argue here as this, the stocks were starting to top, you can see the bonds are beginning to rally. Now this is a pretty good divergence. I'm not going to claim we're going to get a divergence signal uh, every time, but you can see stocks made a new high in there, in here. At the same time, bonds were rallying. It's not what you wanted to see for the stocks to be rallying. As the stocks began to sell off again, bonds held up. Okay, If, if the sell-off here in uh, stocks was not going to continue lower, we would have seen bonds really get hit and sell off. They didn't. They held up. So in fact, as the, as the market again tried to move higher, Bonds are also moving higher, telling you that there's a problem. But stocks start to collapse, bonds take off. All right, so moving fast forward a little quicker, you can see again as the stocks are bottoming, the bonds are topping. Moving forward again, let's move forward. Stocks putting in a high, bonds putting in a low. Stocks putting in a high, bonds beginning to sell off here. Stocks put in a low, bonds put in a high. All right, so stocks up at a high, we're going to want to see the bonds continuing to move lower. If the bonds start to move higher in a significant way with a significant with a sell-off in the stocks, then that's reason for concern. But for right now, what I'm saying is that bonds moving lower, which means rates moving higher, is actually a productive environment for stocks. Now, this may fly in the face of what a lot of people are thinking, which is as long as rates stay low, then stocks should move higher. The fear is that rates are backing up. In other words, rates are moving higher, which is what happens when bonds go down. That's going to be negative for stocks. The fact is that right now, that has not been the case. Rates, even in... It, where rates are right now are still so historically low though I don't think we have to worry about that. The other thing we want to take a look at is the overall trend in bonds and that trend is pretty convincingly down. Let me show you why. There's a lot of noise on this chart but let me explain it. 
Here are the TLTs again going back to the middle of 2011. But let's just focus on a few major areas first. Here's a really significant trend line. We've been pointing this out for quite some time, which bonds, as you can see, break out, move higher, pull back. The black line is a 200 day. It's also the trend line. And after some uh, messing around, consolidating, have now significantly broken that trend line. A little more detail here is just look at the overall trend. From the highs, uh, sell off, rally doesn't make much progress, sell off makes a new low. We have kind of a mess in terms of consolidation, but it really is unable to take out that level. This creates uh, what will ultimately become a trend line here, and then we start moving lower. And look how we've been moving lower, if I can blow this up for you. And this is why I said the, the overall trend in bonds is lower. After this major swing works its way higher, unable to take out this, I've drawn these lines in here to just kind of illustrate the big trend here. Down breaking this trend line, then it moves down, matching this level, tries to rally up, doesn't make a new swing high by any stretch, big move down, rallies back up, comes right back up into natural resistance in here, another leg down. All right, so it's been significant leg down, moderate leg up, significant leg down, moderate leg up, lower lows, lower highs, basic analysis. And if you just keep an eye on the fact that that's the nature of the bond market right now, forgetting about, you have to put aside what you're hearing on in the news, the Fed pumping up the bond market. It, the fact of the matter is that rates uh, as determined by the market are backing up. It's an indication uh, of the market believing that there's more strength in the economy and that's what's driving stocks. Now, bigger picture from a channel point of view, if we want to look at targets, here's a valid trend line, here's a, a good channel based on that trend line. Depending on how long it takes to get down there, we're talking about 112, could be even talking about 110. We're sitting at 115 right now. That may sound like a big number or a big change, but let's put it in perspective. Put in perspective this low at about 110, just under 110, and this low at about 110 happened late in 2011 and early in 2012. It hasn't been that long really since we've been at this level. So it's not unreasonable to think the bonds could back up all the way to the 110 level. My point is that's been constructive for stocks. You should view that as constructive for stocks and big picture as long as the trend in bonds is, uh, is down and controlled stocks will probably continue to move higher. I could also make the argument, but that's not really my point, that bonds backing up here could be a result of money flowing from bonds into stocks. Everybody on the streets looking for that, that turn to happen. I'm not even saying that that's the case right now. The fact of the matter is that the relationship, as I pointed out quickly, exists. That is an, a relationship that's very much driving the market. Look for that relationship to change, or beware if that market if that relationship changes. I don't see it happening, but if it does, I'll definitely be paying attention to it. All right, that's a lot for one video. I'm going to leave it at that. Keep it simple. Keep your eye on the big picture. Keep your trading with. Uh, good low risk entries and let the profits run. Take advantage of the long side. Don't be afraid of it. Hope that helps and we'll see you in the next video.